In this video I will be documenting the disassembly and rebuild process of the T90 3-speed. This transmission can be found in models CJ2A through CJ5. I'll be using parts from the Kaiser Willys Complete Overhaul Kit, part number T90K. This kit basically replaces every moving part inside the transmission. I'll give a brief overview of the disassembly with the main focus on rebuild and reassembly. The tools you will need are very basic, uh, snap ring pliers, a couple of brass punches, some different hammers, a 732nd Allen wrench, and I like to use an impact gun with a half inch socket. First step, I recommend draining this before you take it out of the vehicle. It's easier to get a pan under it, but if your transmission's already out and it's full of oil, uh, the drain plug is right down here. Just drain that. You can tilt it forward off the edge of a bench and just make sure you get all the oil out of it just to uh, prevent mess. There'll still be some in there and we'll cover that as we prep this case for a rebuild. First step, take off the six uh, bolts. They're a half inch socket. I already had some of these out. Speed things up. If this has a lot of RTV or really old gasket, it might fight you. Uh, resist the urge to pry on this with a screwdriver that will mar this surface. Uh, your best bet is to just get some sort of, I like to use a dead blow hammer and hit it right here. This one was already off, so it's going to pop off easily. Um, you might have to hit up back here on this part of the case. That's totally fine. Just always use a rubber hammer when you're striking cast iron because uh, we don't want to damage it. But generally, these pop off without any trouble. Um, hopefully your shift tower looks like this. It's common to get rusting up on these shift rails if the transmission has sat without oil uh, spinning in it for quite some time. It's also very common uh, if the Jeep has sat without a top for water to get in here and this whole thing to be a rusted, disgusting mess. Thankfully that is not the case with this transmission. Uh, just on initial inspection, it looks to be in excellent shape. A little bit of pitting on the input shaft, but nothing too um, shocking there. Next step is take the 732nd Allen and remove the three bolts on the front of the bearing retainer. This is generally just a paper gasket and will pop right off. So you can leave the bearing on there if you want to. Get some sort of parts bin to put all of the stuff you take off in and try to keep it organized. Behind that bearing retainer is a little felt seal. Sometimes these are completely gone, uh, missing, or just uh, deteriorated to where they're unrecognizable. This one actually looks in pretty good shape, but we'll obviously be uh, updating that when we put everything back together. For the next step, we're going to separate the main shaft, that's the back portion of these, this upper shaft, from the input shaft. This usually doesn't require tools. Um, a lot of people have the problem where they take the transfer case off, this bearing pulls back, and you hear all the needle bearings um, that hold the main shaft pilot inside the input shaft. Those bearings will fall um, down. In this instance, it's okay because we're taking everything apart, but when you are just removing the transfer case and that happens, that's a problem. So what I do is I just grab the and back shaft of the and give it a wiggle. I heard some bearings <laughs> falling out. Sometimes you gotta bump it and this uh, bearing retainer on the back will come loose and just wiggle everything and it will come right out. My shift collar fell off. That's totally fine. That goes on here and You'll also be able to remove the uh, input or the third gear synchronizer, so you can take that off. And already the case is uh, getting more empty. So you can see the little needles. There were uh, a group of these inside the input shaft, and that's what falls out when you remove your transfer case. So that means you'd have to pack them in here with grease and carefully reinsert that uh, main shaft, which can be done with the transmission of the vehicle. It's just a pain and uh, not a fun time. At this point, the next step would be to remove these two bolts, which are 732nd Allen uh, cap head screw as well. Um, that holds the oil slinger little trough of oil in there. Um, this transmission doesn't have one. Someone has 
just put the bolts back in to seal the oil off. That's really common. Generally, they're either ripped up, broken, <laughs> rusted apart, or just completely missing. But if you have one in here, it's just a sheet metal half circle that goes um, right on the edge of this uh, input shaft to kind of channel the oil into this front bearing. So as you can see, this doesn't have it. This Jeep's been in service for years and it, the bearing is fine. So if you have it, I recommend putting it back in, but if you don't, uh, don't stress over it. So that is removed by just taking these two bolts out and letting it drop down. There are several different ways to do the next step. Um, I'm just showing you the way I've done it and uh, it's worked well for me and doesn't require a press. Uh, this front bearing is pressed onto the input shaft and retained with this snap ring right here. So we don't need to remove the snap ring on the bearing. We're going to take the one off of the input shaft and use that and the transmission case to help us remove the bearing from that shaft. This snap ring can be tough. These are not the correct snap ring players for that. You'd want the flat build one, but sometimes if you're like me, you just have to get by with what you have. Um, just take your time. A screwdriver can help you sometimes, but if you're patient, you'll get it. So I'm going to wrestle with this here for a minute. Okay, snap ring is off. Set that to the side with our rest of our old parts. And then I take a brass hammer and just tap on the input shaft and it will press that bearing off of the shaft. Make sure your oil slinger is removed or you will ruin it when you do this part. And never hit the input shaft with a, a hardened metal hammer. So use an aluminum or a brass hammer. Okay, just give it a tap like that. And now the input shaft is good to go. It will turn as it comes off because it's on that beveled gear. And you can see this one has some pitting. So I'm replacing it, but I'm still using a brass hammer because this would still work as a backup if I needed another one. Then you can just from the inside tap the bearing out. This is just a slip fit and uh, set this in the pile with the rest of the parts. I'm rolling right along. There's really only two parts left in the transmission. We have the reverse idler and the cluster gear, as some call it. That's the, uh, the lower shaft. Um, and the gear assembly. Time to turn the case around and locate the locking tab. So that's this little uh, T-shaped tab. Sometimes people replace them with hunks of license plate or cut down bar stock or piece of sheet metal. But this is the original style. It uh, holds the edge of that rear bearing retainer and it keeps these two pins from, uh, from both spinning and from working their way out. Your transfer case uh, has a cutout in the back of it for this. You'll find the very early transfer cases have a much smaller cutout. So if you try to put an old transfer case on this newer case, transmission case, it won't seat flat, it'll wobble. And that's probably because it's hitting this larger tab. And that one fought me to the end. Just be careful to not scratch up your case too much. I can tell this one's already been apart it has somebody else's marks on it so that's the little locking tab the next step is done from the front of the case so for reference the input shaft would have been on here this is the front we're going to drive the larger cluster gear shaft through the case and that is always done from the front so make sure you're going the correct way you will damage the case if you try to go the wrong way. This part is important to use a soft drift of brass or aluminum or something that's not going to damage the case. Uh, I've even seen people use wooden dowels. Whatever works, just something soft. So just center it over the pin and it shouldn't be super hard. Sometimes they're rusted, but as long as that locking tabs out, so you can see one kind of medium <laughs> whack it started moving. So just keep tapping that through. Make sure your uh, drift is smaller than the hole in the case. Once you've driven it through enough that you can get a hold of it, spin the case around. Sometimes it's hard, that one came right out, with oily gloves to grab the shaft, but 
that one came right out. Now inside here you're going to have some thrust washers and a whole bunch of little bearings. To get the cluster gear out it's very easy. With everything else out um, you just kind of rock it and turn it and it'll pull right out. So there's your washers. This larger gear will fit right up through this cutout. You just kind of roll it and pull it up through. If you keep your hand on the bottom it will save some mess of all those needles falling everywhere. Once you have it to this point, you're going to start seeing these needles come out. Each side has, I think, 44 needles and three washers. And then in the middle of that, there should be a spacer. So this is your bearing spacer. You can see there's some metal in there from over the years. And you want to replace this as well when you do your bearings. You have the same thing on the back side of this gear, as well as a thrust washer on the front and the back, and a spacer with a little tab on it. So those are all your parts for the cluster gear. Now only have one item left to make this a complete disassembly, and that is the reverse idler. That's this little gear that spins on a shaft um, on the back side of the case. So just like with the main shaft, or the main uh, cluster gear shaft you want to drive from the front to the back. It's the same way with this one. It has a little cutout for that tab. This one is a little more tricky because you can't get a direct shot at it. So that's why I like having a long drift like this. This is my favorite one for this job. And we're coming from, it's kind of hard to see, coming from the front to the back like this. And that's all it is. Some people hit it a few times and it doesn't move and then they try to hit it from the back to the front. That's no good. You have to go from the inside. Make sure you're on the shaft and not the case and give it a good whack. Okay, you can kind of keep an eye on it. Make sure it's moving a little bit. This one can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. It's moving. Should get a little bit each time. Then you'll reach a point where it starts to become easier, which it's happening right now. And it just shot out the back. That's a good sign. This is the reverse idler shaft. This one looks in pretty good condition. This uh, one has, particular one has a flat machined on it, probably for oiling. And this is the reverse idler gear. There's no bearings inside here. It just has a bronze or brass bushing. And this one looks in pretty good shape. But that's it. If you're wondering why I'm taking this transmission apart to begin with, um, I'll talk about that now. Yes, everything looks pretty good on the surface. Um, not rusty. None of the gears are broken. No broken teeth. Anything like that. But all is not well within this transmission. It uh, came to me stuck in gear um, and the owner had talked about a few problems they had with a sticking throttle and a problematic clutch that led to a big awooga on this gear shift which caused it to get stuck in gear. So after a little bit of whacking I found the problem was on this uh, synchronizer shift collar. So if you can see, there's some serious uh, wear around here. That's where this part meets the input shaft. So it was spinning at high speed and not releasing. And then this got kind of like jammed on there. And uh, so then now this is so raised that this collar won't slide. And in that process, it broke some of these synchro dogs. They ride on the synchronizer hub and help engage that collar. And all three of these were down in the oil pan, you know, the bottom of the transfer case, along with this, uh, which appears to be some sort of washer that was mangled and bent. So it had metal circulating through the oil. I think it pretty much was done running when that happened, but uh, the rest of the gears show a little pitting and wear, so it's a good time to just replace everything. That uh, also leads to second gear popping out, so it's you a know. great time 
to take this off, replace second gear, replace everything, get rid of this problem, and start fresh. Since I am replacing everything in this transmission, the Kaiser Willys T90K kit comes with everything on here. It's not assembled, but I really don't need to take this apart for the job I'm doing. But for the video, I'm going to just so you can see how that's done and what the parts look like. So this is what's called your main shaft. It has your input pilot, synchronizer hub. This is second gear. This is first and reverse gear, your bearing retainer rear bearing and main shaft. The way you take all this apart is quite simple from the front. So this is where the front of the transmission would be. There is a snap ring. Um, this one is also quite stiff and can put up a bit of a fight. So we got to pop the snap ring off. There it goes. You heard it echoing through my shop. That's okay. After the snap rings off, the synchronizer hub should come off fairly easy. This is part of the problem with the failure that this transmission had. So you can see this is the front. This is your this is the synchronizer blocking ring for second gear. And inside here are two little springs. There's a hunk of metal. That is a piece of one of those. Um, a few of these were missing chunks. And I'm guessing that's what that little piece of metal is down in there. After you take off the second gear blocking ring, second gear will slide right off. This is second gear. This is where a lot of your uh, popping out of second gear problems come from. It's a relationship problem between these parts. Um, so it's a good idea, especially um, if you've had problems with that when you're into your transmission, just replace all of this stuff. So there's the second gear assembly and uh, we're getting down there. So this, all that's left on the main shaft now is first gear, the uh, rear bearing, and bearing retainer. This gear is pressed on the main shaft, but it's usually a very uh, slight pressed fit. So you can kind of stand it on end like this and use first gear as a slide hammer and uh, give it a couple of good whacks. And it should all come apart. So this is your main shaft. This one looks in nice shape, but we have a new one, so we're going to use all the new parts. Uh, this is first gear and reverse, so you see some pitting there. These usually get worn pretty heavily on the edge from people grinding it into first and reverse, um, so good time to replace that as well. This is your bearing retainer, this is the bearing spacer, and this is the rear output bearing. And that is it. These three speeds are extremely simple and I encourage everyone to learn how their Jeep works and learn how to rebuild their own transmission. It's a fun job and it really helps gain some knowledge on how your Jeep works.